In today's video, we're going to be doing a follow along workout for your hip muscles. Whether you've been told you have hip arthritis or hip bursitis or hip impingement or whatever somebody is saying is causing your hip pain, we're going to be following the idea of ATM, always think muscles, so you can strengthen the things that actually move your bones in the right way. I'm gonna take you through three exercises. We're gonna do two rounds of them, and then we're gonna do an extra round at the end to help you strengthen the weaker side so you don't train in any asymmetry. We're going to target your hip flexors as well as your glutes and hamstrings with these three exercises. And we're gonna help you restore a very natural range of motion that you've probably lost because you've been sitting on your butt way too much watching TV. Or scrolling on TikTok, ooh yeah. Tell them about the equipment they need. When you first start, you don't need to use any equipment. I'm going to demonstrate the exercises with dumbbells and ankle weights, but when you first start, don't even worry about it. Add those later after you've gone through the workout at least one time so that you can get used to the motions and understand what you're gonna be doing. Then you can get some light ankle weights, light dumbbells, and start gradually progressing things for yourself. Finally, thanks to all the viewers and subscribers who watched my hip arthritis video. Thank you so much for your comments. Your comments are why I made this video so thanks and without further ado let's get ready to think right move right and feel right all right so let's get started you're sitting down you're gonna be lifting one leg up towards your chest same side until we switch okay so here we go we're gonna be lifting and lowering lifting and lowering. When you're doing this, I want you to make sure that you are allowing your low back to round a little bit. I don't want you to try so hard that you're like super cranky and you feel like stretching happening in your lower back. I just want you to let it round a little bit. That's gonna help your, your pelvis go a little more posterior. It's gonna give you a little more room to get hip flexion. That's bringing the thigh up towards the chest. If you try to stay super arched like that, you're going to limit the amount of hip flexion you can get. You're gonna actually be blocking the ability of certain muscles to fire, so don't do that, okay? So we're just gonna be lifting and lowering. And if you wanna make it harder, you can hold for longer periods of time. You should be feeling muscles working here in the hip flexors. Just take your time. If you wanna hold it the whole time and really make it burn, that's cool too, all right? Enjoy it. Then we're gonna go ahead and take a little rest time. We can take some time, talk a little bit. So we're looking for hip flexor muscles. Normally when we're sitting, they are just super blah. They don't do anything. You're sometimes using the uh, psoas muscles and iliacus to hold you, or you use your low back muscles. And then those low back muscles get real good at holding you in that tight position. But that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for actual hip flexor muscles to work. So here we go. We're gonna go to the other side and we're gonna be lifting and lowering. Now, you can add weight to this to make this uh, more impactful, okay? So you can also throw just any kind of weight. It could be a water bottle. It could be a backpack just on top of your leg. Again, feeling for the thigh, upper thigh muscles here. Some of your deeper hip flexor muscles would be great. Just trying to wake them up because almost definitely they're weak and atrophied on you. Yes, they're also short. Yes, this does shorten them some more, but there's ways we can deal with that. So you could also be leaned back more, okay? And allow yourself to go through that bigger range of motion, okay? And also you can be stretching and doing some hip flexor stretching. I have a video on that that I will link to probably up there definitely down in the description box. You can also play around with angles, okay? So you can figure out, hmm, do I wanna be more in this way, more out this way? Just figure out where your hip flexors are weak and do something different. Oh, too long, take a little rest. Then we're gonna be moving on to the next exercise. We're going to be going into a bent over position here and you're just gonna be kicking one leg back. Okay, still got a couple seconds. You can keep resting, but get set for this. Your low back is not gonna be arching heavily. Keep it nice and firm and stationary. Then we're gonna be coming up and back down. Now, no special angles, okay? You can figure out what angle works for you. It could be straight back. It could be diagonal. It could be a little more diagonal. It could be just a little diagonal, whatever you want. 
but do it with control. Okay, have your knee fairly straight, but you can also play around with a little more knee bend. A little more knee bend is gonna be more glutes. Less knee bend is gonna be more hamstrings generally. Okay, and just explore. The longer you hold, the harder it gets. If you're into that kind of challenge thing. Okay, just find the angle that you're not good at. Spend some time there, feel those muscles working. And then we're gonna switch. Oh, after a little bit of rest, shake it out a little bit. Rub your booty, get 30 seconds of rest. I'm gonna move you, bony. Uh, I think you're gonna be able to see my butt. Okay, this way. So we're gonna switch to your other leg. Stop making so much noise. All right, here we go. Two, one, and go. Up, hold it, and back down. Find that challenging angle, whatever it is. Try to get it up high without losing your lower back position. So if you're trying to go up high and you feel like you're uh, arching like that, you're going too high, right? Just make sure it's the leg moving relative to the rest of your body. If you want more challenge, you can throw an ankle weight on, but again, if this is your first time, don't do that. Just get used to the motion. There's no rush, no rush here. Play with those angles. Ooh, I found a really weak angle there. That's not good. What is that doing there? That's what happens when you sit. You sit a lot, things get weak, man. And that's how you end up at the doctor's office complaining that your hips don't feel good. You let things get weak. All right, go ahead and relax. Take 30 seconds of rest and we're gonna be doing the hip hinge, All right? So. Hip hinge, if you want to, you can have something in front of you. You can keep the chair, the couch, whatever in front of you. And you're gonna keep your knees pretty straight. Do not hyperextend. You don't need to lock them really hard. And then you're just going to be bending at the hips. This is the axis of rotation here. Okay, you'll notice my spine shape doesn't change. Okay, you ready? Let's go ahead and do it. One minute of practice of this. Your feet are around a hip width apart. And if you're wondering what a hip width apart, it's like about the width of your fist. So you can just put it down, pretend it's between your feet. If that's uncomfortable for some reason, it feels totally undoable. I don't mind if you go to shoulder width. I don't mind if you play around with this a little bit. Do whatever feels doable right now and keep in mind that you're trying to gradually give yourself more and more options. So you're trying to do this with your feet wide, do it with your feet narrow, whatever it is. You should feel some stretch in the backs of your legs, your butt, your hamstrings. We're trying to teach them to be long and then we'll also want them to be strong when they're long. But first, we're just gonna coax them into lengthening. Whew, all right, take a little rest. We're gonna go right back to the beginning and get back into those hip flexor lifts where you're sitting down. Again, if you want to make these harder, you can throw some weight on there, throw a dumbbell on there, whatever you wanna do. Really train up those weak little hip flexor muscles. Alrighty, here we go. Lifting, holding. You decide how long you wanna hold. If you wanna make these harder, leaning forward more, makes these quite a bit harder. But you should also try leaning back some, at some point because that's gonna help you go through a bigger range of motion. It might help you establish more strength that helps you get into the harder, more tucked, tight position. Whatever you wanna do, it's all good. Also, remember angles, you can be out to the side. Throw a little weight on there, oh yeah. And while we're doing this, the second time, I want you to really pay attention. Is one side weaker than the other? So really pay attention to the fatigue you feel. 
in the side you're doing right now. I'm doing my right side. There's a 50% chance you're doing the right side as well. All right, take a rest. Although maybe it's more than 50%. I don't know. When you watch videos, do you naturally mirror? Or do you just do what you see on the screen and flip it? Or, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the chance actually is. But Schrodinger's hip flexor exercise. I don't know how to describe this. All right, and then we're going to be moving on to the left side. My left side, your whatever side. And here we go. Lifting. Nice and slow and controlled. Pay attention. Is this side weaker? Is the other side weaker? Is this side already getting more tired than the other side? You will almost definitely have a side that is weaker than the other side. And that's going to be important in a, just a couple short minutes here because we're going to work a little bit more on that weaker side. And it's going to be good for you, even though you hate it. So, up we go. And you know what? If you get tired in a certain angle like I just did, you can switch the angle up. Get tired somewhere else. You got a whole minute. So you got time. I'm just going to hold it. These last 10 seconds just, I don't know why. Why do I do this? All right, good. Take a little rest. If you want, you can throw in an ankle weight. Or not. We're gonna be firing up glute, hamstrings. We're doing this uh, in a way that basically has maximum resistance at the top position, which means these muscles are in their shorter um, configuration. So we're trying to get them stronger when they're short and also stronger when they're long, which is that next exercise. For the hip flexors, yes, we could also do something to help them get stronger when they're long. I've got a video about that. I'll link it down below and probably up here and explain how you do that. I also believe I've got got that in some of my follow along videos, which I'll talk about later. So just trying to find the angle that feels like a good, decent challenge. You'll notice I kind of poke at my belly sometimes. So I'm just trying to make sure my abdominals are engaged. Helps me keep my low back from getting too uh, arched and cheaty. Trying not to cheat. Oh yeah, way out at that angle. That's, that's the stuff. All right, got 30 seconds of rest. Let's go ahead and switch that. Hamstrings, but that's where you should be feeling this. And it should feel challenging. I mean, it should feel like this is getting firmer. <clears throat> the firmament of your booty. All right, so bent over, get ready, up we go. down up we go you can hold it longer if you'd like it will build some more stability a little more strength in your hip I find the hardest thing about doing any kind of hip strengthening is just patience I am not a patient person you know, maintaining that focus so You'll notice I'm using my phone to run a timer. If you haven't, then I'm glad you're so distracted by the exercises that you didn't notice that. Um, when you are doing a workout with your phone, I really suggest you find some way to disable everything else on your phone besides the timer. I do that on my phone when I work out because otherwise I get lost. Go ahead and relax. You get lost on messages, emails, tasks, sending a, oops, sending messages to my friends. It's real distracting. So set up something to block all that stuff. All right, so for this one, we're going to take some weights if you are ready. If not, don't use the weights. 
and we're gonna be hinging. Down we go, slowly down, keeping those weights real close to the legs, just like so. All right, here we go. Taking these weights, if you wanna use the weights, we're gonna go down nice and slow and controlled, real easy like, keeping the weights close to the legs, keeping the spine in the same shape. If this hinge feels too tough, you can bend your knees a little bit. Feel that stretch. If you don't wanna use weights, don't use weights yet. If you're starting with weights, use light weights. Don't use 50 pound dumbbells or whatever you think you are capable of. Just start with something light, get that stretch, get things used to the feeling of lengthening. Okay, then go where you can get, let the weight safely bring you closer to the floor. Don't rush it, remember that slow is safe. And fast is foolish. Alrighty. And don't worry, we'll have another chance to practice these hinges. We're not done yet. We're almost to our asymmetry round. All right, go ahead and relax. I'm gonna set these down. We're gonna be sitting down. <clears throat> and doing our hip flexor lift. So whichever side was weaker, if it was this, your left side, make it your left side. If it's your right side, make it your right side. Whichever side is weaker, you're gonna do some extra reps on that weaker side. All right, ready? Here we go. We're gonna lift and back down. Lift and back down. Lift and back down. Now if you are like, holy cow, this weak side is really weak. I can't do anymore. That's fine. Just take a rest. Just do whatever you can do. But I do encourage you to keep trying. But if you need to take a rest, it's fine. Take a rest. Do a few more reps. <sighs> Try to give it different positions, different angles. Super easy. And remember, please, that you probably do also need to stretch your hip flexors. There's other videos for that, check them out in the description box. Because your hip flexors, your hips, hip muscles need stretching. So check out the videos that I've made for hip stretching. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and relax. All right, and then we're gonna to go to our uh, hamstring and butt kickbacks. Okay, so. Again, whichever side was weaker, you're gonna be doing that side right now. So for me, I think it's actually usually my left side. So I'm gonna get ready, my left. Who knows, could be your left too. Get set firmly into the bench here and then leg pretty straight. Out to the side, straight back, whatever works for you. Nice, slow, and controlled. You can even, if you want to get real crazy, kind of go into like a deduction and get real funky. Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. And up, up, up. Wow, I wonder how many people even know that reference and whether I even got that reference right. Never really listened to Michael, or <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Let's just stop. Let's stop talking about that. Let's just focus on your hamstrings and your glutes here. <sighs> Must be getting delirious. All right. <laughs> All right, good. Take a little rest. We're gonna do the hinges. Obviously we have been doing this with two legs so there's no weaker side per se, which is fine. Let's keep this video nice and simple. You're gonna be going legs, whatever width you want at this point. Weights, no weights, whatever works. And we're just gonna be going down towards the floor. Keep the knees relatively straight. Not locked, here we go, one minute's on the clock, here we go. Wherever you can go, 
hang out there a little if you can tolerate and then back up. I don't want you to try to go to a position that feels intolerable. If it feels like you're about to snap or pop something, or your knee's gonna explode, hips are gonna explode, something's pinching somewhere, you're doing it wrong, you're going too far. Slow is safe and fast is foolish. Say it with me. Slow is safe and fast is foolish. All right. Again, if you want, you can bend the knees a little bit. That might help you feel your hamstrings or your glutes stretching a little bit more tolerably in some way that doesn't feel so horribly dangerous and threatening. That's not what we're looking for. We're just looking for lengthening and strengthening. And this is going to help you do all kinds of things in normal life, picking up bags, children, luggage, whatever. Good. Go ahead and relax. Can you believe it? We're now at the end of the workout. Congrats, you made it to the end of the workout. Now let's talk about some key points. Number one, how often should you do this workout? I suggest you start off twice a week with some rest days in between, like Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Saturday. If you are really deconditioned, which is probably the case if you got the hip arthritis diagnosis and you're a generally sedentary person, you probably have some really atrophied muscles around your hips. So doing these exercises might cause quite a bit of soreness and we don't want to cripple you with soreness so give yourself a little bit of safety factor by having some extra days in between so you can recover. If you're somebody who's more active you might find that this is really helpful on a more frequent basis. You might want to use it as a warm-up before you do other things. You might want to use this almost every day or a couple times a day because you sit so much in a seat while you're tippity tap typing. Just remember to listen to your body. You don't want to hammer it and hammer it and hammer it and think it's going to be happy. You got to give it some coaxing. You got to give it some time and gradually train the muscles to get used to what you're asking them to do. Number two, as I've mentioned before, you need to also be stretching your hips. So please don't expect that this set of exercises alone is going to fix everything about your hips. You do need to stretch. You do need to strengthen in different ways as well. For some really easy hip stretches for you, whether you have hip arthritis or bursitis or hip impingement or whatever, please check out the links down below for some super simple standing hip stretches. And if you're looking for more follow along videos to help you rebuild your hips at home, go to uprighthealth.com DIY and find a program that'll work for you. And if you'd like to support this channel so I can make more videos like this one in the future, please use the join or thanks buttons on YouTube or use the donate links you'll find in the description box. Can we tell them about our OnlyFans now? We do not have an OnlyFans account. That's what he thinks. Be sure to check out these free videos for your hips. Like, share, and subscribe. It makes a big difference. And I hope you always remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.